very good morning to you. This, um, this experience morning, of being watched by the Prime Minister, what was that like? Curious, but uh, people do that occasionally. Anybody is entitled to come to the House of Lords and have a look, and the gallery was quite full. But, you know, there is this thing that the House of Lords should just nod it through, shouldn't do anything about it. Traditionally, the Lords has been very good at improving bills, scrutinising them, and that's our function. We can't, in the end, overturn the Commons, and nobody's suggesting it, though you judge from some of the media hysteria and the press, the print press, that that's the case. A lot of us are really worried. I'm really worried. Not that the referendum decision shouldn't be respected, that's what people decided, you respect that. But the country is split down the middle. 52% voted leave uh, and 48% voted remain. If the Prime Minister was really defending the whole of the country, which is what her job should be, she'd be going for a one-nation Brexit, bringing everybody together and making the best of what I think is a bad job, yeah, rather hang than on, just hang on, assuming hang on. this Peter, very Peter, sectarian, hang on. single minded course. Right, let me, let me just challenge you on that point. I don't think she has any uh, duty to do that. I mean, the, the whole point of a referendum, like an election, is you have a winner and a loser. And if the winner is Brexit, and I voted Remain, uh, full disclosure, then that's it. You don't have to appease the rest of the people who lost. You just have to get on with the yes. will of the majority. That's it. You, you make a fair point. But look, in two issues that I raised, first, we are going to be cut off the way we're going from the single market of the European Union. Now, OK, the, the decision was to leave the European Union. That has to be respected. I accept that. Agree with the point you're making. But we should still retain access as we could, like Norway does outside the European Union, to the biggest, richest single market in the world where half our trade is, where cars are exported, where goods and services are exported, without tariffs, without charges, and without barriers. People wanting to fly on holiday to Spain or France or wherever it might be should be able to go with the same conditions as they do now. But here's what I don't uh, understand. And, here's what I know, understand. We don't pay any roaming charges anymore. We should be able to retain that. Right, but this is painting a very apocalyptic picture of what is going to be happening, which is the same kind of apocalyptic picture we were warned of before the referendum. But isn't the reality that pragmatic common sense will come into play here? Why would Europe want to turn away all the trade that we give them. But they're not stupid. They want the money. Some of them are really struggling financially. It makes no common sense to me that they would all go, right, that's it, draw a bridge up, and uh, Britain can go swing one. No, look, there's going to be some kind of deal of some kind, but it'll be a worse deal. That's the problem. Now, the other thing that concerns me, which I also raised, is the border with, between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. I speak as a former Secretary of State who helped negotiate the solution there in 2007. We've had 10 years, more or less, of stability. Now, that is potentially toxic to the peace process. Don't just take my word for it. Take the word of the former Taoiseach, the former Irish Prime Minister, as well as many other prom prominent politicians, John Major to Tony Blair, who have all said this. That border's got to stay open. I'm moving an amendment to keep that border open. I think that's constructive, don't you? Well, yeah, well, talk about being constructive. What are we going to do about all the lazy peers in the... And I don't talk about myself mm. in that sense. Uh, Although the lazy we'll to make yeah, it sound like that. The lazy peers of the realm. The ones who, you know, park the taxi outside, nip inside, you know, stare at the, stare at the ceiling and then get back in the cab yeah, and go well, home and bank their cash. You know who I'm talking about. Right, what do we do about these people who are just freeloading at our expense? We've actually got a committee looking at the size of the House of Lords, which is far too big. Everybody agrees that. And the last Prime Minister, David Cameron, kept packing it with, with extra peers. So that's an issue that has to be dealt with. A lot of peers, however, are very active. I happen to be one of them. Others are more active than, than I am. Uh, we had a full day yesterday. We worked quite hard. And, you know, I think you've got to recognise that. We have a job to do. I spent nearly a quarter of a century in the House of Commons. The level of debate in the House of Lords yesterday and most of the time and the level of scrutiny, the detailed forensic looking at the laws that, that the Commons puts up to us is much better in the House of Lords. We do a very high quality job there. Just give an example, many of your viewers will remember. Remember the four million people who were going to lose their tax credits about 18 months ago. The Conservative government was going to take them away. There was a rebellion in the Lords. 
because the government doesn't have a majority there. And it defeated the government, and they thought again, and they changed their minds. That's the sort of constructive okay. role the Lords okay. can play. That's what we're trying to do on this bill, and what I'm trying to do.